I'm in our Windows XP box, and what I've got is a piece of surveillance software that hackers could use to monitor what goes on on a victim's computer on their desktop. And uh, this is actually one of probably hundreds of pieces of software just like it that are out there. And they're sold by reputable companies, uh, supposedly for the purposes of monitoring your own home computers or for employers to monitor computers in the organization. And they all caveat uh, the sales of these software by saying that you should only use this on computers that you own. Well, obviously, hackers aren't going to do that. Hackers are going to use them for whatever they want. So we're looking at the spy software, and basically, uh, I'll show you what it does. Let's go to general here, and uh, it loads up. If you can get this installed on the machine that you want to monitor, it loads up uh, for all users or specific users. You can run it in stealth mode. You can run it when Windows starts up. And this kind of shows what it will log. And I've selected a few things already. Keystrokes used, or keystrokes typed, Windows used, applications executed, websites visited. And it will capture their content as well. It will also log internet traffic, emails, chat conversations, everything. You can even have it monitor specific programs. Uh, it will also capture screenshots of a particular user and their activities on the box. And we'll store all these in a file and let you grab this log file with a USB stick so you could do it very quickly and surreptitiously and uh, so forth. You can also get alert notifications by email if uh, a user uses a particular application or visits a particular website or does a particular activity. So it's kind of interesting the things you can do with this piece of software. And uh, logging obviously captures uh, which options you can capture. We saw that in the general setup. There's daily log activity that you can deliver remotely, advanced options, like uh, there's a stealth hotkey that you as the administrator, or the hacker rather, can use to bring it up from stealth mode. Log locations, uh, remote desktop, security, and so forth. So there's some uh, interesting options in this software. So let's go ahead and uh, start to use this, and then we'll uh, go ahead and bring it up, and I'll show you what it what it has logged. So let's say start monitoring. We have to give it the password for it to start. Now, obviously, if you're doing this in stealth mode, we don't have to do this. And this is this the, the trial version, so the uh, real version actually doesn't show too much, so the user may not be aware that they're being monitored. So let's uh, open up a text document here, and let's enter a password. My webmail password is 54321ABCDEF, just for example here. Let's save that and close it. Now let's go visit a website and see what we get. By default, it comes up to the VTC website. Our connection is a little bit slow. While that's opening, let's go run an application. Let's run Calc. Do some other activity on the box here. Let's close that. Um, let's try going to Google instead. And even if the connection is not active, like it apparently isn't now, the software may log this. Let's go ahead and close this. We don't have to worry about actually going to the site. Let's do our Control Shift Alt M. We get our password back up. Put that in, and then. Uh, Gives us this little nagware there. Now let's go look and see what it logged. Keystrokes typed. So we actually got, uh, here's where we went in the note, notepad, and it shows things we clicked on, like uh, explore, command, and I typed in calc and IP config. I went to Google, tried to go to Google, didn't get to go there, of course. Program manager. These are programs that got open. Here is actually where I put in the password to get back to a spy agent here, which is password 123456. But it logged everything I did, basically. Now, we didn't have it do screenshots or anything like that. And obviously, that would take up a lot of CPU time and memory. So uh, you would probably want to do that with caution. Only on certain things would you want to capture screenshots if you suspected a victim was uh, doing something that you really wanted to capture on the screen. You might do it for that. So that's basically. Uh, spy agent and again this is one of probably hundreds of types of software just like it that you could use to get information about an individual 
from a system that you've attacked and got this software on there. So this is just one way that you could attack a system, get credentials, you could get passwords, you could get information about the user, personal information you could use for identity theft and so forth. And there are dozens of programs out there just like this that do this. So you're not tied to one program. Just do some Google searching and you'll find them.